recording and we can go ahead and start. So let's talk about uh, BizTalk plus API apps. And uh, I think this is a quite an interesting combination considering all the knowledge we have of uh, BizTalk server and all the deployed infrastructure that is there today and uh, how much interesting it can be to, to host API apps on Azure. So let me quickly go through the agenda of uh, why, uh, so wh uh, what are we going to cover? So I'm gonna talk, talk talk and touch a few points that are important, why combining BizTalk uh, and API apps, uh, what are API apps and, the, and the why we would do, how do we want to connect to them. Um, I'll talk about the Azure App Service Gateway, which is an important piece in the middle of these uh, connectivity between BizTalk and API apps. And then about BizTalk connectivity, uh, so how is, how is BizTalk gonna connect back to our API apps? So let me move to the first slide. And the first slide is just uh, a, a pre, uh, an introduction to the uh, why mixing them. And we, we continuously talk about hybrid solutions, uh, mixing your on-premise infrastructure with Azure. And there are quite a few reasons for it. Uh, we've seen these, uh, these approach uh, happening more and more commonly uh, because of, of all the benefits. So let's uh, go into the, why? So why mixing both? It's all about hybrid integration. That's that's what I, I have in my mind. You want to uh, reuse your current investments, right? Whatever you uh, you already have in BizTalk is quite useful and it's tested and it's working. Um, so you want to keep that because normally migrating that comes with a, with a huge cost. But at the same time, we have the other, um, the other side of the world where uh, Azure is becoming a, a, a very important platform for uh, hosting your 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 workloads, and um, so a few benefits from connecting to the API apps. Uh, one of them would be uh, what about connectors? You know, API apps that come with Azure from the marketplace. You can choose a connector, and you can connect to uh, a whole different sorts of of systems that you cannot do today with BizTalk, and you have to go through uh, the development of of adapters, and we all know that development of adapters is not something not very common, uh, and it, it it is quite uh, intense, and so people tend not to do it or avoid to do it when they can, and and as uh, by using the API apps, you get the connectivity to these connectors um, just by using them. That's it, and but that would be to to limiting of analyzing the what you can benefit from API apps because connectors are just one of those types. And uh, the way I see it is you are able to connect to any API. So, uh, and one of the things that you will think um, is where do I want to host my API whenever you build one? And API apps are, are quite a natural um, a place to to, to put the API, uh, your API uh, as host. And obviously another benefit is this is running on Azure, so you can benefit from these uh, hyperscale capabilities. Uh, if you want more cap capacity in your API apps, you can just simply slide the scaler and, uh, and there you go, you have it. And more, in more interesting than that, you can even have automatic um, scaling, so based on, uh, um, criteria that you might define, it can be CPU, memory, or even your response time of your API, you can make Azure automatically scale and respond to the, to the level you want without even having to think about hardware, which is quite interesting. And then another, another topic that has always been uh, not uh, so great in terms of the stock integration is the ability for lightweight integration, which uh, is enabled by the, the these API apps that you have um, in running in Azure. So what, what is an API app? I think it's a little bit important that we touch a few of these concepts. And the most important part is a rich platform and ecosystem for building, hosting, consuming, and distributing APIs. So it's a, it's a very natural place where you can put your APIs uh, and uh, and it makes your, your life much easier than you, what you would normally have to do before. And then at the same time, so it makes it very easy because it's enterprise grade. It comes with security out of the box. It's very simple to use it. Uh, you don't need to 
to invest a lot in terms of your code. You, have, you can focus on your business logic rather than uh, code just to make it work. And, and then a, a, a lot of automation in terms of how you use and connect to this API. So part of, part of that, those concepts in, within API apps are um, the, ability, the, the gateway that you have, which will allow you to provide uh, authentication for your API applications. Uh, and this is quite interesting because if you, if you ever uh, try to, to run a sample where you have to connect to multiple applications, sorry, to uh, providers of security such as uh, Microsoft accounts or uh, Azure Active Directory or Facebook or Twitter, uh, they all come with uh, some complexity of understanding the, the flows of identity and, and all of that. So the gateway simplifies quite significantly these, uh, this need for authentication in API applications. Then another important part is uh, Swagger. Um, so it's, uh, it's something that uh, Swagger is a framework. It allows you to document your API and discover it. it it reduces significantly the, for, the time for first execution, which is a, a very important uh, metric of an API. And, and so by having it out of the box and being self-generated uh, within your API apps, uh, it's, it's quite a, a valuable information because every API is documented by default, which is uh, quite good. And again, the connectors, uh, so it's, Again, it's very important. So it's a type of an API app that opens your um, opens connectivity to SaaS platforms, and and, and these can be uh, can be seen as the adapters in the cloud, and uh, and they are quite powerful and, and allow you uh, significant um, time saving you know, when when developing a solution that requires connecting to them. Um, and so I want to now going to a demo and uh, what I will do is I'll walk you through a calculated API that I've built uh, just as a simple explanation on how can you do this uh, how simple can it be to, to get an API up and running in Azure and so what I will do is I'll switch my windows just a second going to try to get to uh, change the size of my of my fonts This should be much better now. So let me just quickly go through what I've uh, done to be able to have this API uh, here up and running. So I created a project. Uh, it's very simple to create uh, a project for an API app. So if you search for API, you can create a ASP.NET web application, and then you have the Azure API app, uh, and uh, and then it, it creates the project for you. Uh, this is based off uh, MVC project, and uh, it has a few differences. That is what allows you this API when published to to work. Um, uh, like an API app and have all the the required information. So one of the one of the important things is the Swagger uh, automatic documentation, and um, so this is as simple as an uncommenting uh, a small entry that we have here on the project. Uh, enable Swagger UI. This will automatically generate based on the controllers that you have in your uh, web API uh, to do so. So and then. I only had to add controllers. And the, the API I decided to, to implement is a calculator, so it just has the basic calculations, nothing else. And um, as you can see, this is quite simple and straightforward, just one method. 
it's just a get. You receive two parameters. We do the calculation. We send the param the, the result back, uh, and we have all the four uh, uh, method uh, well pro uh, operations uh, that you have in a, in a basic calculator. So have divide, multiply, and subtract. Uh, and so this is the API app. I didn't do more than that. Uh, the only thing I've done after that was publish to uh, Azure, and that's what I want to show you. So let me bring my window of the API. So here we have the calculated API. Um, this, I, I just created automatically from Visual Studio. Um, this is essentially uh, web um, a website that uh, uh, Azure website and uh, we have here a few properties because we have uh, Swagger uh, definition enabled you can see uh, immediately how does uh, how does the API work which uh, operations are available and um, they can be uh, easily uh, executed by by doing by analyzing the, the Swagger definition. Uh, an important thing uh, in the um, for an API app is that uh, it it works with a gateway because it's deployed. So all the API apps and um, and logic apps within a, a resource group have access to a gateway, and this is the gateway where you can see uh, how is this a, a API app supposed to be accessed. And uh, so one of the things we can go and take a look is the properties. And so you can see here how I decided to, to make my API app accessible. And I will quickly just switch these to public anonymous so that I can uh, simulate for you uh, calling the API app. So it's just very simply a, um, there. And I now because I made it public, I'm able to access my API app and I can call the methods. In this case, you know, I'm adding one plus two, and, and you can see I have a result comes in XML, and I receive three. And, and obviously, I can change the values, and uh, just to show that this is the API, it's actually working. Uh, but this is just to show you how does the API app uh, looks like. But obviously, we don't want to to make our API all the times. Uh, uh, anonymous access available. And so I'm just going to put back my authenticated uh, request here in my API. And now I can show you if I try and execute this, probably need to run this on a on an incognito window because I think I'm authenticated on the other one. And so every time you try to, to access the API and you're not, you don't have the right authentication, uh, this is what is provided by the the API app gateway uh, or the, the uh, app service uh, gateway, uh, you get one of these messages. So it failed, and uh, it says there is not no no default login policy set, and this is because uh, we haven't logged in uh, to access this application. And so what you actually need to do is to log in to the to a particular provider, and uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm, And I'm going to log in for, uh, with Azure Active Directory. That's the, the example I use later on. But I enabled in the configuration two different providers that you can use. You can use either Azure Active Directory or Microsoft account. Uh, in this case, I, I navigated to the page on the gateway where I say I want to, uh, to uh, sorry, I want to authenticate with Azure Active Directory. So let me just get my user. And now we can authenticate. And now that this is uh, my request is authenticated, I can now navigate back to my um, operation. So let me copy the URL. And because now I'm authenticated, I'm not no longer being redirected by the, the gateway, and I can access my API app 
and so I can go and perform my, my operations as, as I was performing before. Uh, because I was a pre-authenticated, that's why it didn't ask me for authentication. Again, okay, let me, I'll just now go through quickly just the, how to set up authentication in the gateway. And so let me click here on my gateway for my API app. And this is one of the things that comes for free with the, the, the gateway. So let me click here on application settings. Sorry, uh, I need to click in identity. And so I can show you that uh, I created um, two, I, I created the authentication for two of these identity providers. One is this um, Microsoft account, um, and the other one is Azure Active Directory. So essentially, you have to create an application access, and then it generates a client ID um, to, to be able to, to access uh, these identity providers. And because they are configured, then you can navigate to the to the gateway and authenticate against the, the provider and, and being able to access your API through this identity. Okay, so let's uh, go back to the slide deck. And let's talk a little bit on uh, security of a, uh, API apps. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned, this is one of the free features that comes with the API apps. And, um, uh, but you obviously don't have to use it. And so um, you can choose to, to use one of these approaches for API apps. You can use your, um, the App Service Gateway, which is what I used for this example. You can have a do-it-yourself authentication. So you make your API uh, to be accessed uh, publicly without authentication in your gateway, and you can implement your own authentication. And then there is another option, which is the, uh, using Azure API management as a, uh, a, a mediator between the API and, the, and the, the consumers of the API. The app service supports the most popular identity providers, uh, which include the ones I showed you in the demo, and, and they are listed here. So Azure Active Directory, Microsoft Account, Google, Twitter, and Facebook. And they uh, allow you to very easily use these identity providers. So this is, uh, so let's talk briefly on what is the gateway actually doing. So for every resource group, you have a gateway, and uh, it allows you to, it provides you these authentication capabilities. And here on this, uh, uh, this image, you can see the logic of uh, what happens when someone calls an API app. So all the, all the requests, they are, um, they go through the gateway. And uh, when, depending on how the gateway is configured, you can be, uh, you can go through the authenticated requests, or you can go all requests go to your public application if they are uh, if there is access to it. The gateway has a token store. This is where it, it stores the, the the token for the identity provider that you are talking with, and allows you to um, to to authenticate against that particular uh, provider. So one of the capabilities provided to you by the uh, this uh, gateway is it provides you the SDKs that enable you to perform the authentication and authorization tasks. Um, and the idea is that by using uh, having all of these capabilities, you don't have to go and uh, implement code for, for authentication. And so it generally will save you a lot of time implementing uh, an API. Then obviously monitoring and troubleshooting are easier uh, because all of these uh, API related information and traffic is being uh, tracked by the gateway so you have information about what is happening. And so let's uh, now talk about the, the flows of identity that you can have in using, using the, the gateway. This is important especially for uh, our BizTalk integration. And so one of them is the um, client flow identity for API apps. And this is about the ability for the client application to talk directly with the identity provider, getting get a token, 
send the token to the gateway and then getting a Zumo token that will allow you to communicate uh, securely and having access to the system. We also have um, server flow identity for API apps, and this is where the client application relies on the gateway to communicate with that entity provider. Uh, this is the scenario I used in the, the example I just showed you on the browser. Uh, you don't um, you don't rely on your application to to to, in, to enter the credentials. You actually forward the user to a um, to a web page. You redirect it to the web page, and then you allow the identity provider to send the token directly to the gateway, uh, which will then uh, provide a token back to the client application, which will allow you to, for you to communicate securely and, and have access to your API. So now let's talk about how, what about BizTalk connecting to the cloud. So there are multiple ways BizTalk could connect. And um, I, I just wanted to identify a few that are the ones that make more sense. And I, I thought of a few, a few scenarios. One is use, using a web-based adapter. This is the, the most obvious one. You, know, you want to use WCF Web HTTP adapter, or you want to use SOAP or, or, or something else uh, that talks uh, HTTP uh, in the back end. And then another use case uh, I think could be interesting is the ability for you to use inline sense. Uh, and uh, I could see a few scenarios where you could have a, a, a mapping functoid where uh, you could uh, convert a message based on the results that are stored in the API app. Um, and then another one could be orchestration inline. You call the API app uh, in code and you are Kind of benefiting from integrating uh, with BizTalk. The reason why I included this last two, uh, just as an, as an example of what is possible, is uh, to show you that because the idea of integrating outside of BizTalk is also the API app uh, to be lightweight integration, uh, this, this, uh, both of these options would uh, also be lightweight within this talk and if in the cases where you don't care about um, the, the loss of messages and, and the consistency and persistence that the stock provides you, uh, you can actually use this in code, depending obviously on the scenario, you, it, it is a possibility. Uh, but obviously if we are connecting to API apps and, and they are, most of them, they, they, uh, as they are today, they are REST, they, they talk in JSON and XML, they even provide you a Swagger API. The WCF Web HTTP adapter is the most natural choice uh, to, to talk uh, with, um, with an API app from Bistol. Uh, obviously, the, one of the problems that uh, arises from uh, using Web HTTP adapter is that you need to control the, the, the HTTP headers that are being uh, used when communicating with the API app. And that is what needs to be done in, in a special way within BizTalk to be able to, uh, to talk uh, with the uh, uh, API app. So let's, uh, and in this case, I didn't use JSON, but if you were using a JSON API, you could use, you could use the, the decoder and encoder, JSON decoder and encoder provided in BizTalk uh, for serialization and deserialization of messages. So how to authenticate to API apps from BizTalk? I thought the client flow authentication for the BizTalk scenario is the best choice. Uh, it allows you to use the authentication client SDK. So essentially you talk to the, to the authentication provider yourself and you can do it using the SDK and then you get a token that is a token for your client, uh, for your identity provider. After that, you can use that uh, that token to authenticate against against the gateway and uh, get a, a token that is a token that the API app will require. One of the advantages of, of these is that this authentication type does not require a redirection, and you can um, and so you can programmatically and automatically, without a human to be uh, intervening, authenticate and and, uh, and enable this communication scenario. 
And then uh, another another uh, scenario, another reason that made this scenario the most uh, important one is the existence of the Active Directory Authentication Library, which allows for server-to-server -server credentials grants, uh, which a lot of the other identity providers do not provide. You have to consent and you have to accept uh, the authentication in a UI that normally is based on a redirect, which obviously for BizDoc is not the most convenient uh, approach to, to authentication. So let's uh, walk through the BizDoc solution and uh, let's see um, what I created there to, to be able to achieve this. So this is the BizTalk solution, and uh, I, I've created a very, very simple BizTalk solution. I wanted it to be the, the least intrusive in terms of uh, BizTalk. And um, <clears throat> essentially what I've done is, uh, is a proxy. I am exposing uh, uh, the BizTalk calculator in BizTalk on-prem. And, and to do that, what I, what I created is I created a, an application that has a receive location that is a um, a request response, and then I, I have a solicited response port that talks to my API application um, and, and invokes it based on the, the request that was submitted to the original application. <clears throat> and so here I, I have used very simple, um, a very simple orchestration. I'm not even using type messages. I'm just using um, plain, uh, plain XML messages. And what I have to do special here uh, is what is in this uh, BizTalk expression box. And so essentially, I, uh, when you are communicating with web HTTP adapter, you have to um, pass on the parameters uh, to the um, uh, to the adapter as context properties, and so I created a context um, a context property schema, and uh, and that's what I'm populating here uh, in these uh, first lines. I'm saying which calculation operator I'm calling and which the parameter a and b uh, that I'm getting from the original message, and then I had to use a dynamic port, uh, and this is because of the the nature of uh, the HTTP headers that we need to pass. I was uh, I was able to very easily um, provide with um, uh, provide with a uh, with a, a send port that was static and I was able to to call the API. But in essence, I would have to go and specify other, which is this Zumo authentication other, and I would have to hard code it. So whenever it would uh, expire, I wouldn't be able to access my API. And so with this, what I've done is just I'm using a dynamic port. And my other is is actually um, invoking a, a, a an assembly that I deployed as part of my solution, and so that's where all the secret of the solution is. And uh, let's go and take a quick look at it. And so to keep it simple, I just put all the static values here, uh, hard coded, so that it's easier to spot the uh, the intention of the code. And so essentially, I'm using this. Um, Active Directory Access Library, and I'm creating an authorization context and client credentials uh, based on uh, the tenants that I, I want to use as part of um, uh, of the, the of who has access to that particular API app, and then using server-to-server -server authentication by using client ID and and secret to access the um, the application, and then. One of the things you can do with the authorization construct in in, in the in Adult is that uh, you can acquire a token, and uh, and so once you have a token, you can very easily um, put it as part of the as a part of the request. So essentially, here I'm uh, sending a, I'm doing a login against my app service client, and the app service client is essentially. Uh, uh, an API, an SDK that's provided by the app service um, SDK, 
uh, which allows me to communicate back to an app service. And in this case, uh, I'm doing a, a login for Azure Active Directory, and I'm providing the access token I got from my Azure Active Directory when I was communicating up here. And then I'm just extracting the authentication token and passing it on to this top. And so as then, if we have the correct HTTP headers, we can now uh, successfully communicate uh, back to our API. Okay. Yeah, to be able to achieve these, uh, I had to use a couple of NuGet packages. So there is a NuGet package for Apple uh, con connectivity. There is one. Um, well, there is actually, I used the workaround. I was not being able to find a client SDK for app service uh, very easily. And what I used to, to be able to have this was um, the ability to add uh, Azure API app client, which brings all the clients required DLLs to authenticate as well. And so once we have that, we, we have now the ability to authenticate against uh, an app service. So, and I want you, so let me just go through this slide and then I'll, I'll show the application actually working. And um, so things that I, I think that we can explore from here is about also invoking on-premise desktop from an API app using, using, for instance, hybrid connections, which would allow us the opposite communication direction, which I don't think it will be the most obvious one and it might not be the, the, the most common use case, but it's a, it's a possibility. Another thing that I think could be uh, quite interesting to be explored and used is uh, an accelerator for API apps, uh, because a lot of the, the things that have to be done will be the same for um, connecting to any API app. We just need a reference to the, the right ones. And, uh, and another thing, since we have uh, Swagger and that's part of the API apps generating schemas and the authentication code automatically could be something that would improve this experience uh, quite significantly. And uh, now I'm gonna show you the actual integration working. And so let me just bring the right screen there. And so what I have here, I don't know if I will be able to zoom this one, uh, but what I have here is just SOAP UI and I'm, I'm invoking my local service, which is my Bisto calculator service. This is just an exposed orchestration uh, in a, in, um, using the, the, the wizard for exposure. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this. This is going to call the backend. So Bistock is, is going to execute that orchestration and then it will get me a reply back. And you can see I got the reply back and this essentially got me the result, which, so the parameters I was sending is one and 200, and so the sum of one and 200 is obviously 201, and we got the results back from the API. But now let's take a look at the BizTalk execution so that we understand what happened there. And let me bring the BizTalk admin console here. And let me look at tracked service instances. And essentially, let's take a look at the messages that were exchanged with my orchestration. Um, so we, we've seen the orchestration. We will get a message. This is the, the message we received that we received from uh, my uh, SOAP UI call. It's uh, an XML that has a message for adding uh, the two parameters that we have there. Uh, and then that message is actually forwarded to our WCF web HTTP endpoint. And here is where the magic happens. Um, so you can see I have a few uh, context uh, properties that are used just for the web HTTP configuration. Uh, you know, I have here uh, 
context property A, B, and operator, which are the ones I used in the BTS operation mapping, which I will show you just in a few seconds. And then, but more, and more important maybe, is the the HTTP, HTTP adders that were sent through with the message to be able to communicate. And here we can see there are two, I'm sending two of them. One is to get an XML message back. Another one is the X uh, Zumo authentication token, uh, which I, I got from the adult API that uh, I called. And then I also send a few other things uh, like HTTP method and URI. So what am I calling uh, and also a mapping between the not finding the mapping but there is a mapping between the the, the incoming context properties and the, the web HTTP port and then we get a reply back from the web HTTP endpoint and this is where we get that reply message which is the result 201 uh, coming from from there and then we send the message back to the original caller uh, in, in the with the message we received from WebHTTP. I will also take uh, uh, the time to show this uh, art coded port to show you exactly what I was talking because since I'm using a dynamic port it's, it's not so easy to, to understand and uh, what I'm doing is very similar to this. Uh, I have a, a WebHTTP port targeting my uh, uh, API app and then I, I mapped an operation here uh, Called I called it operation one, but essentially it uh, it goes to uh, it takes three parameters. One is the operator, the first um, switch on this REST interface, and then the the A and B parameters that are passed on to each of the operators. And then because these are all uh, properties, we actually need to do the value mapping uh, between what comes, what ha is there as a pro option, and the values that come in the in the context. And here it's kind of a direct mapping between A and B and operator, and within this uh, namespace. Then, because uh, this is a, a secure communication, you have to have transport security enabled. And the last thing is. So there are a couple of other things. So one thing is the passing on the HTTP headers. In this case, I was passing them hard-coded. You can see uh, the authentication header was just copy-pasted here. And then the last option is just uh, suppressing the body in the case of, of uh, verbs. And in these cases, I'm doing a get, so I'm, I have to, to suppress the body for, for the get that I'm doing. And this essentially covers it, so I, I think it touches all the important points in terms of achieving uh, a solution that works in the um, uh, calling from BizTalk and API apps and, and going, through the, um, going through the gateway, authenticating with, uh, with one of the providers available, and, um, and so essentially integrating BizTalk with an API app. And that's it. Uh, so thank you uh, for attending. And uh, I think the, the most interesting part might be questions uh, that you, you might have uh, regarding uh, what can be done uh, with the API apps and this stuff. Awesome. Thank you for that, Ricardo. Um, so we'll, we'll just open up questions now on the uh, forum and see see what people think. The, the first thing there is just um, Kent's comment about the um, the user voice thing. So I uh, really support Kent um, on this idea that for BizTalk server being able to consume Swagger metadata and generate schemas, I think would be really cool. Yeah, yeah, because uh, that seems to be the most consuming task. And you know, you'd have to take the, the JSON messages, use the generator. So it's all almost there, but it doesn't, it doesn't do it automatically. So it would be going from uh, uh, quite a large amount of time to a few seconds to get everything in place. So um, Ricardo, I had it, well, we'll wait and see if anyone else has questions. I'm going to jump in and ask a few. Um, so one of the things I was wondering was whether the, um, the adult call to get your token could have been done in a pipeline component. Yeah, it could. Actually, I, 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 I thought about implementing it in three places, and then I decided just to do it the easy way. Uh, but the, there, there, there would be, uh, we could do it in pipelines. That, that's no problem at all. It could actually have 
pipeline properties exposed. And, and so all these required, uh, it could be a reusable component very easily by having all the client ID secrets and tenants that you need to connect to, and, and it would do it all for you. And um, depending on the SDK, we could also have a, a, a pipeline component that could uh, target all the different um, providers that are available, um, but some of them, they don't have a, a way to do server-to-server -server communication. And um, the, uh, the other option that I also thought and, uh, and I even uh, gone 90% through was uh, doing a WCF extension, behavior uh, extension to, to do the same as what the pipeline would do. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking that because I, I, I thought with, um, I guess if anyone's doing it straight away tomorrow inspired by your demo, I guess the only thing about an orchestration is that token probably expires, so if you hit retries or you suspend it and try to retry that token could have expired, I guess. Um, yeah, so but one of the things that is good with Adol is that they provide you that capability for you. So. Uh, it, it, it keeps the token in memory. If the token becomes invalid, they will retrieve a new one. So essentially, you always call for the new token, but it, it's cached, and so yeah. you don't need to, to worry with that. So that's an advantage of using the, that library. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. So we, um, so when we're going to see a BizTalk 360 accelerator for API apps then? <laughs> well, you, <laughs> I thought while I was writing the, the slides, I thought about that. So. Uh, let's uh, analyze the idea and see if there is a, a potential there. <laughs> um, so, did anyone anyone else have any questions at all, or any any feedback? Just generally, if people like this session, they can just pop something in the window just so we know that this is the, the kind of stuff you guys want to see. Um, I'll just have a quick check of Twitter while for a second and see if anyone's popped anything on there, mate. Um, Yeah, just uh, nothing on Twitter, but Kent. Uh, yeah, thanks for the feedback, Kent. And um, yeah, I guess I guess first class support would be hopefully something we can see in the next version of BizTalk. Uh, but it, I think it's it, it's important to know that it's possible to plug these things together right now. Yeah, which I think is, um, you know, to me this combined story just makes the hybrid integration um, sort of use case even stronger, doesn't it? Yeah. So um, I guess if, the, if there's no other questions, um, thank you everyone for joining. Um, the, the video for this should be. Oop, quick question here: Do you think the next version of BizTalk will support API app better? Um, do you do you have a view on that, Ricardo? Well, I, I do feel always that uh, BizTalk investment is always on the low side, so uh, I would be. Uh, I would be pleased to see it, but uh, I'm, I, I would not be very confident that it would come. So I think I think we've got um, Jeff Holland on the um, on the call tonight. So hopefully, if Jeff's listening, um, he can feed that back to the product team. Um, but I think generally, I think you know a, a lot of people are sort of saying about that that use case. And to me, when Microsoft are investing really heavily in the cloud integration space, it, it Logically, it makes sense that you would you would want to have a fairly seamless story plug in your on-premise integration with your cloud integration. But I think we're still quite a way off the next version of BizTalk yet, anyway, aren't we? So we're talking. I think the, the last public information was like mid you know, mid late um, yeah 2016. So they've got plenty of time to do that. But I think um, you know the, the key thing to me is that Logic Apps is evolving so quickly. And hopefully that'll that'll be available before the next version of BizTalk comes out. So at least if we can plug the two together, um, that that's a good story. And, and Kent's just suggesting there that we can use Service Bus as a as a bridge anyway, which again is another option and yeah. and would be fairly cool. I guess, I guess that would be um, possibly an easier one if you want to call from maybe a Logic app into BizTalk Server would be going through Relay possibly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. For all the scenarios where I was thinking the opposite uh, direction, but all, they were all kind of relying on hybrid connections or some service bus yeah. uh, to, to be able to achieve that. So, so if um, hypothetically, if the API app wasn't one you custom built, but was, for example, the um, maybe the Dropbox app, would would that be just as easy to consume from BizTalk? Do you think? Yeah. So the only difference would be I would have to. 
to choose the, the verb to be post and not yeah. to press the body and uh, call the right API. That's it. Uh, there isn't much more there. Yeah, to be done. I mean, I think I think that's the big the big value add of um, app service for existing BizTalk customers yeah. is that instead of having to, you know, you get these new SaaS applications where we maybe don't have an out of the box adapter, but if there's a connector that's an Azure API app, if we can use that from BizTalk server as well as Logic apps, then we're in a good place, I think. Yeah, and it means that you know the Hopefully, the ability to deliver new new connectors. Hopefully, one, it gets simpler for vendors and for open source projects, and two, they're more readily available. Yeah, and it would definitely increase the return on investment in BizTalk, and also justify better the investment on the API app to connect to different places. And so I think yeah, that uh, makes total sense. Awesome. Um, so I think um, that, that's it for this evening, everyone. Um, thank you for attending. And um, we'll hope, hopefully catch everyone next week where we've got Johan's session about um, business rules engine.